Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So, someone in the Discord asked about components and how to use them. So, I thought I'd put together a little video showing you how you can create a component and what they're typically used for. So, before we get started, I'm in Unreal Engine 5, but this is the same for any version below 4.26 and any templates. Specifically VR for 4.27, it's, it's all the same, so don't worry about that too much. But the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to create a component which allows a cube to rotate. So if we create a cube, we drag it into the scene. Now we see we're going here. And what we can do is we can add a component, or we can add a component to our cube. It's basically a piece of reusable code that we can have on anything we want. So let's see if we, actually if we don't do that, we press simulate, you see nothing happens. But if we set our cube to movable, so I don't forget, and then we add a component rotation that we've created. We can then press play and our cube will rotate in a manner that, that we want it to. So I can select it, go to component, and you see here I've got some values exposed. So if we change the roll to zero, the pitch to zero, we'll get a different result. And then we can do this with just a load of other things. So you can imagine if you've got loads of things in the world, you don't want to keep coding them to do the same thing. So you can have a go around. That's a bad example. You need to set that to movable. And then if we press play now, you'll see why we get the same thing. Bit of a weird one for the cone, but it shows what we're doing. So how do we create one? So first thing we do is we're going to right click. We're going to go to blueprint class. And then you see here we've got actor component or scene component. In this case, we're just having an actor component. We don't need any transform information because we're getting that from the parent. Uh, the scene component has a transform, which is, let's say we have a sword mesh. We can create a scene component, which could attach to that, could be the handle, the way you pick it up and you can rotate it around. But for now, we're just going to focus on the actor component. And I'm going to call this AC for actor component underscore rotator. Yeah, rotator. So now we can open this up and if I bring this window over, you'll see that we have an event graph. It's basically the same as what we normally have in any other blueprint. The difference is we don't have any components, so we can't really reference specific items. So what we can do is we can use, uh, if we delete event tick, we can use something called get owner. So if we right click and search get owner, what this essentially does is, as soon as we attach this to another blueprint, it looks to see what that blueprint is. So it gets the overall piece. And from there, we can pick specific things to control. So in this case, we want the root component because no matter what we add, we want it to rotate around that point. So if we drag off, we search root component. You see, we get our root component. And because we want to rotate around, we essentially want to get the world rotation. So we're going to drag off, get world rotation. And now we want to create a variable. So this is the variable that we're going to update and add to, to make it rotate. So we can right click, we can go to promote to variable, and we're going to call this current rotation. So basically on begin play, we are going to look at our parent. We're going to get the root component. We're going to get its rotation. So we know what it is. That way we can add to it. And now we have the option to decide how we want to add or when we want to add it. Um, I like to actually use a set timer by event rather than the event tick because it actually allows us to control the speed of it from within the component. So if we drag off and we do set timer by event. And the reason we're doing this and not using a timeline is because if we search timeline, we can't actually get one in a component. So we're going to use this instead. So the next step is to right click and create a custom event. And then We'll call this rotate and we can plug this little output delegate to our event. So basically once this fires, it's going to fire this event and we're going to have it set to 0.01 and we're going to have this looping. So every 0.01 seconds, it's going to fire. Uh, this is the same value as an event tick, what it would be on by default. But in this case, it allows us to control it and manually adjust if we need to. Just works pretty well for performance essentially it gives you more control now what we can do is we can actually set our current rotation so we're going to drag that in plug that in here 
and then we want to add values to this. But before we do that, we want to actually get what our values are so we know. And then we can add to it. So I'm going to right click and then split pin. I'm going to drag off and I'm going to do a plus for an add value. And then do control W to have three. Hook those up. And then we can split this pin and we can have them all go in there as well. So now whatever we add here is going to add to our rotation value every 0.01 seconds. So if we promote to variable, we'll call this roll, and then we'll just do brackets x. And we're going to repeat this for the others. So pitch brackets y, promote variable, your brackets z. And if we add this a little bit, and we hit compile, they will be defaulted at zero. And what we want to do is we also want to make these public so we can actually see and edit them in our in our blueprint essentially. And to do this, we're just going to use the root component again. So we're going to drag off and do set rotation. And we'll just do set world rotation. Plug that into our set value. So every 0.01 seconds, this fires. And then we plug in our rotation just like so. And now we can actually test this to make sure it works. So if we hit compile, I'm just going to move that over to the other screen. And then we bring in a cube. We need to make sure our cube is movable because it's gonna it's gonna rotate. If you don't do that, you'll get a, you'll get a bunch of errors up here every 0.01 seconds. So now we can actually drag on our component, and you see that we've got it in here. If we press play now, nothing's gonna happen because we don't have any rotation values in there. But if we select our component and we change our yaw to let's say one, our pitch to one, and then our roll to something random. You'll see that we play and we get that rotating around. So it's essentially a piece of reusable code that we can use anywhere we want and do what we want. And it's just a matter of dragging it on to what you need and making sure we have it set to movable. Otherwise you get a window that looks like this. <laughs> and then when you press play, it all rotates around. So that's one way to create a very simple component that you can reuse in your project. Uh, if we have a look at something more complicated now, what we're gonna do now is see how we can actually use another component to let's say spawn weapons, or spawn, spawn projectiles. So imagine we've got like a, a top-down game. We have our enemy and we wanna just fire off constantly and then rotate around, but we don't know what we want, so we're just gonna make it random. So you can see here for an example, I've got it so our little cube takes our arrow component and then just fires off into different directions. And if we take our cone, we can add an arrow and then we can give it a tag. And that tag will be barrel. So that's where it's gonna be firing from. And then we can rotate and position this arrow where we want it, as long as we have it selected. Uh, you know what it might be? It might be set to hidden in game. Excellent. So we take that and we just rotate it. This one's not going to be precise. But now what we can do is you can see here I've got a component which we can drag and drop on. And then when we hit play, we now have something that fires from that location and takes it into account. So this one's super easy to set up. First thing you need to do is create a material. So we'll just do another one. So material M underscore projectile. This one will be, we'll do it blue just so it stands out from the other one that I've got. And then base color and emissive, just so we can see it. Now we can close that and we can create our projectile component. So this is gonna be its own blueprint, which we spawn in. So we're gonna have blueprint class, actor, and then we'll call it BP underscore projectile. And in here, we're gonna add a component to this list, which is gonna be a cylinder. And then we're going to shrink this down. 
just so it doesn't look, so it looks a bit more laser like. And then we're going to apply our material. So projectile, see it's turned purple. And we've got to set the movable, which is good. What we want to do now is actually use a, use a component which already exists. So if we go to add, you'll see here where they've got the little sockets. It's like a plug socket. That these are all components we have access to already inside of Unreal Engine. And one of the ones that we're going to use is a projectile. But you can see here that once you make one, it actually shows up for you in the, in the, the blueprint. So you can add them here as well. Uh, if we go down, we're going to just look for projectile movement. And in this case, I'm going to make sure it's selected. I'm going to set the initial speed to, let's say, 1,000. Max speed to 1,000. And I don't want this projectile to fall to the ground, so I'm going to set this to zero for the gravity. Uh, rotation follows velocity, why not? And then rotation remains vertical, yep. And we hit compile. And what we're going to do is we're going to test this by dragging it into our level and making sure that it goes in the right direction as the, the cylinder. We might have to rotate it. So yep, you can see it goes off in the other direction. So what I'm going to do is select our cylinder and then I'm just going to rotate it by 90, which is all messed up here. Nope, wrong one. There we go. So it's all going in the right direction. So if we close this blueprint now, that blue bullet should essentially shoot off as it goes. So if we delete this one, and now what we can do is we can create our component. And that's going to be a right click, go to blueprint class, and we're going to have this as a actor component again. So AC underscore blue bullet. Let's just have that. We have it set up the same way that we had it with a previous component. This one, however, is going to be much simpler. We're going to just have our event begin play. And then we're going to search timer. So we can set timer by event. And then we will have a custom event. And then we'll call this fire. Connect our delegate. And we're going to set our time to 0.25, let's say. So it'll be pretty much a rapid fire. We're going to have it looping. And now we need to decide how we want to get our arrow. We do need to do get owner. So we know what blueprint we're actually looking at. And then now is how we get our arrow. We can either get the component by type, which would then have multiple ones, which we could loop through, or we can do it by tag. In the other example, I did by tag, but I think what we'll do in this one is do it by the component. So we'll drag off, we'll do get component. And you see here, we've got get component parent class, uh, by class interface tag. You could do tag if you want it to be a very specific one, but if you've only got one arrow on there, you can then just search component class arrow. And then we can use this one to determine it. Here we just need to get world location. Actually, we want to get world transform. And then we want to actually spawn our actor. So spawn actor from class. And you see here we've got our transform, just plug that in there. Our class will be our blueprint projectile. So BP underscore projectile. And we can connect that up. Uh, collision, handling override. You normally do always spawn ignore collisions. It just stops it from getting caught inside the box if you've got a destroy or anything on that, on it like that. And now we can actually just Drag that to the side and make sure we have a shape. So we'll bring in a, let's do a cylinder, firing cylinders. We then add an arrow, which our component's going to look for. And then we can attach our bullet. And if we make sure our arrow can be seen, just so we know where it is, you see that if we set it to hidden in game, is false, we can actually select the component in our hierarchy, and then we can move it to where we want it to be. So if we move it up, then once we press play, we fire from that spot, 
And if you remember, we've got our rotation. So we can actually select our AC rotator. And then we can drag and drop that on there. So now, if we set this up correctly, or we give it some some values, make sure it's movable as well. Keep forgetting that. Then we can set this to roll two. So now we spin around in circles and we're firing as well. So this is pretty much just a couple of ways of how you can use components, but you can see how it's super flexible and easy to use once you get the hang of it. Um, as long as you get the owner and you get a root component, you're pretty much sorted. You can then go through the hierarchy to get specific things. Um, one thing we didn't look at is events. Um, pretty easy to do if you've got if you've got a blueprint with an event, let's take one of these for example. Um, okay, so they're just components. We need an actual blueprint. Let's do blueprint class actor. And if we open this up, we can have a, let's do another cube. And then in here we've got I don't know, let's say we've got an event tick. Uh, just because I don't want to set up inputs, just a bit of pain. So event tick, you can see that we can, we want to use this to fire our component. Uh, this is a specialized case. So in this case, we'll have our blueprint class. We'll have a actor component and let's just call this, let's make this our print string actually. So, so rather than firing anything, we'll be able to use this. So inside of our actor component, our print string, we can delete these and we can do a custom event. We can say print string. And then we're gonna have this fire our actual print string. Component activated. So in this Example, there's nothing actually firing this yet. We're going to use our blueprint to do that. So if we dock these windows, because it's getting cluttered, and we go to our blueprint, what we can do is we can actually add our print string component to it. So we can select print string. You can see here, here is our component. If we drag a reference to this in, we can actually access our custom event. So you see we've got our custom event print string. We can drag off. Search print string, and you see at the top we've got call function. This is our string. So now, if we compile and then we drag in our new blueprint, we should see our print string list down on the left. So there it is. So that's how you can use components or blueprints to directly communicate with components to make them activate or do certain things. Uh, they work really well in, in conjunction with blueprint interfaces, but rather than getting into a whole depth of stuff, I think we'll call it there because we're almost at 20 minutes. Just before I go, I want to say a big thank you to all the Patreons and everybody in the Discord server. Um, if you're a Patreon, you can actually download this bit of a mess of a file to, so you can jump in and check it out. And then in the Discord, if you're not already in there and you do need help with anything Unreal related, anything really at this point, then head on over there. We've got over, or I think we just hit 800 people. So we've got a quite a decent community going, a lot of friendly faces. And if you want to have a chat with me about anything, then that's the way to do it. So until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then. Bye.